grayling trees. My wife and I were in France for 26 years, and we came back in June of 2009. We started to work here at Bethany International and Bethany College of Missions, both branches of Bethany. And uh, I work uh, in mobilization with a title called Outreach uh, Coordinator and Ministry Relations. And the Ministry Relations is really visiting churches um, as God opens door for me to preach the message of the gospel, which is the message of the cross, and God's passion for missions. And recently, the Lord is opening up more and more doors for, for me to do that. Also, I'm an outreach coordinator. I work with um, a couple of MIs which are ministry interns here at Bethany who are former students. And we have uh, five or six venues of outreach that we do every week with the students. Uh, one of the outreach um, opportunities we had this past winter was with Trinity Works, uh, with an outreach at um, downtown Minneapolis called uh, King's Banquet. And uh, the day, the, well, before the outreach, we were sent out as a team. We went to the Redeeming Love Church and we were, we were sent out to um, to pass out to invitations. And I went to, with a couple students, we went to North Minneapolis to uh, Broadway, a very difficult area, bad area. And uh, the very first thing we did is went into a cafe. It was very cold and blustery that night. We went into a cafe and uh, met a young man right away who was sitting in a booth. This was like a, um, sort of like a coffee shop. Not a bar, but like a coffee shop. And we could tell he was distraught. So we, we started a conversation. He was running from someone who was trying to kill him and was letting us know that there was someone outside waiting for him with a gun. So I said, well, let me step outside and look. And I went outside, and I didn't see anybody. I came back and tried to reassure him. Uh, to make a long story short, we uh, gave him a little bit of money for gas. And um, the, uh, the patron of the, uh, of the coffee house was getting a little upset. He didn't want to get involved with the police, and he didn't want to call the police. And, so we were able to share the gospel with this young man, and he was very receptive, very, very receptive, uh, and said he would come to the King's Banquet. I don't recall seeing him there, but the gospel, he received the gospel. He was scared and received the gospel. That whole area uh, is a very, very needy area, a lot of crime, a lot of prostitution and drugs and so on. So I was a little bit, I, I, I wouldn't use the word skeptical, but I, I was... I had some questions about the King's Banquet, how it all, uh, how it all shake out. Um, the main thing was the foot washing. I didn't, I didn't know these people would, uh, how they would respond to the foot washing. And I happened to be uh, seated with two couples. The one couple, she was quite young. I want so badly to remember her name. Uh, she was quite young, 23, and he was about 55. When they came in and the program started, the worship we had some, we had um, we had some awesome worship, and they set the tone and they really caught their attention. And then we had some testimonies, and I could tell that the young lady was, uh, she was locked in, she was really locked in. And the uh, the older man, her uh, her companion, uh, seemed less interested. But as the night went on, I remember um, when. One of the testimonies was going on. The food was served, and during that time, um, I, I noticed she hadn't eaten much of her food. She left quite a bit, and I just knew that God was was working on her heart. And uh, toward the end, uh, when the invitation was come, they brought around the, the little basins with the water and poured the water and so on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Explained how they were going to do this. She seemed a, a little bit reticent, but at the same time, I could tell something was going on. So she finally came to me and she said, I'd like someone to wash my feet. Would you wash my feet? Well, I felt a little bit uncomfortable. And as I was looking around, I saw Rebecca standing not far away, Rebecca Blackburn. And I called her over and said, would you be willing uh, to wash this young lady's feet? And she said, I've just been praying that God would give me someone to wash their feet because she wasn't really seated with anyone at a table and ministering in that particular way. She had been ministering at the door at the entry. So Rebecca came over and washed her feet, and I was, I was there praying, standing by. 
And one of the first things is Rebecca was pouring water and being very intentional. And you could just see uh, very loving, caring about this gal. Didn't know her story at all. Uh, she had three or four children. They were estranged from her children. Hadn't seen her children for a number of years. Very broken. Very, very broken. Involved in drugs and so on. And she looked at Rebecca and said, you know, because sort of the theme in the foot washing was not so much of the washing of the feet, but the washing of the heart. I didn't even think that she was, I didn't even think that she was, was really um, getting any of this in the message. Because the message of the washing of the feet and washing of the heart was just something that was almost given in passing that night. But she looked at Rebecca and said, you know, I, I would like to have my feet washed, but what I really need is to have my heart washed. And when she said that, the tears began to, to flow. As she wept, Rebecca wept, and I wept, and several people around there. And she just poured her heart out to God. And I, then I stood, um, I stood back, Luke, and I began to look over, over the, uh, we were up on the balcony, and I began to look down over the scene that was on the first floor, or the main floor. And this thing was happening all over the place. And I just, I just realized in my mind, I understood then that this same thing that was going on with us was going on perhaps in different ways for different reasons for different people, but that same brokenness of heart. And uh, it was a beautiful night. So that was a, for me, that was, the, um, that was the highlight of the whole thing. That morning we had gone out and it was cold and blustery. I don't know if you went out or not, but it was cold and blustery and we didn't really contact that many people. And, uh, um, I thought to myself, wow, uh, I hope somebody shows up. Well, the night that we pulled up in the bus, we went over to St. Paul to Dorothy Day, and that couple, by the way, came from Dorothy Day. And as we pulled up, they were lined up down the street. These are people who had been contacted. These are not necessarily people who had come in buses. So um, God ministered to a lot of people and did a lot of good things. How did I feel that God used this outreach to change the hearts of the Bethany College of Mission students. Uh, well, I know what he did in my own heart. I'm a professional missionary, whatever that is. And John Piper says God has no professionals, and I tend to agree with him. But I know what it did in my heart. And as I looked around and I heard testimonies of the students, let's just take one student in particular. She came to me, an excellent student, by the way, and it's a young gal who loves the Lord with all her heart. She came to me a few a few days before the outreach, and she said, I have some reservations about this and, and about Trinity Works. And I don't mind saying that, uh, being taped, because I talked to Stephen about it and, and told, told him the testimony. And I said, well, you know, we don't always have to understand the ways people do ministry and their model of ministry as, a, as opposed to someone else's model of ministry. But let's not look so much at the, at the model, but let's look at the... Um, at the substance, let's look at what, what's held within the container. And let's give it a chance and um, just hang in there and we'll see what happens. Well, that night uh, after the banquet, I can't remember what time we got to the uh, ICCM Church Life Center in the Phillips neighborhood, and she came to me. And she was just beaming, you know, a smile from ear to ear. And I said, what's up? She said, I think, I just thank God so much that I was part of this. Because she had a similar experience with, in, in a, with, a, with a person, ministering to a person. And it just really did something in her. I've, I, and, and even to, today, I see a difference in this gal. Now, I'm not saying that it was that one unique thing that, that changed her. But it certainly did something for her as far as outreach is concerned. 